Good morning. Welcome to this webinar for Syracuse University. My name is Victoria and I'm the facilitator. My job is basically to start and stop the webinar. Um, Jennifer will be your presenter from Syracuse. You will see me again at the end of the session, but for now, all I have to tell you is that even though you do not have your video and you do not have a microphone, you can communicate questions through your Q&A feature that's at the bottom of the screen. If there's information you wanna go back and revisit or that you think you've missed, this session is being recorded and it will be available within a week on our website, which is oacac.org. And while you're on the site, why don't you browse through the rest of the universities that are hosting information sessions. It is a great way to window shop while you are trying to decide which schools you will apply to. But for now, I will turn it over to Jennifer and I hope you learn a lot. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much, Victoria. I appreciate that intro. Um, and I don't know why, for some reason I'm not getting the Q&A uh, box, but I will certainly, I just have a few slides to go through, but when I'm done, I'll you know try to locate that back to take any other questions that uh, we have today. But I appreciate you joining my session today and entering to hear a little bit more about Syracuse University and what the Syracuse experience is all about. And again, my name is Jennifer Isaf. I'm one of the associate directors here in the Office of Admissions. Um, my colleague, Mike McGrath, was supposed to originally be with me today, but um, I'm doing the session myself. But both Mike and I cover the state of Ohio. So we um, are the main representatives for students who attend schools in Ohio. I cover the greater Cleveland area and Mike covers every other part of Ohio. So uh, we're happy to have you here today and joining us and we're always here to assist. So even after today's session, always feel free to reach out to us at any time. But uh, with today's uh, this session, I just want to give you a nice high level overview of Syracuse University, uh, give you a better perspective of hopefully what the campus looks like, as well as a bit more about academics and the opportunities that you have academically, and also a bit more about campus life and what our students experience uh, outside of the classroom. And uh, I will probably leave just a little bit of time just to in general, talk about the application process, but just want to give you a better overview of Syracuse University. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first uh, picture on the screen here that you see is the picture of our main quad. Uh, this picture is actually from last fall. That's why you see people really close together, uh, but that's typically what the quad would look like uh, on a nice day in Syracuse. And it's really the heart of campus. Uh, we are a mid-sized institution, about 15,000 undergraduate students. And uh, our campus is a very residential campus. Our students are living at, on campus and very active and involved. And it's a little bit of what I'd say an urban environment as well as a residential campus. Uh, we are in the city of Syracuse. It's a small city. It's certainly not the size of like a Cleveland or Cincinnati, but it is a small city. So it is a bit of a metropolitan area, but the campus itself isn't right in the middle of downtown. So you have a very traditional college campus setting. I think that's one of the things our students uh, most appreciate about Syracuse is that you have a little bit of those two different worlds. Uh, but going back to the main quad, this is, as I said, really the center and I'm just going to flip over to another picture. Um, and so the quad is somewhat in the middle of that picture. So it gives you more of a bird's eye view. Uh, the campus is very manageable, uh, easy to navigate. Our students walk everywhere. So it's not the case that it's so large that you have to take a shuttle back and forth uh, to classes or get back to your dorm, but everything is within walking distance. So it makes it very easy and convenient for students. A lot of green space, a lot of places to uh, just hang out in between classes uh, or at the end of the day. And both of the pictures I, I'm showing are from the fall. So it gives you a nice perspective of the colors that we have in central New York and really uh, just knowing that we are on the edge of the Finger Lakes region. So once you get outside of the city, 
that you have a lot of great opportunities for outdoor recreation, all the rolling hills and valleys. It is a beautiful area and a beautiful part of central New York State. Uh, the other thing I love about our campus, as you can see from this picture, is a great blend of old and new architecture. So many of the buildings that you see kind of the front uh, of that picture is what we call Old Row. And those are many of our original buildings on campus. We were founded back in 1870, and we just celebrated our 150th year. And back in March, we were celebrating our sesquicentennial celebration. Um, so a lot of history within the university. Um, also, as I said, a blend with some new architecture. So down at the bottom corner of the picture, you see one of our more modern buildings, and that's the third building to our new house school of public communications. Also, um, not in this picture because this picture is also from last year, but that white bubble top building in the top somewhat right corner, that is our dome stadium. So that's where all of our major sporting events are played. Plus things like commencement, uh, we have concerts there throughout the year, some uh, career fairs will happen. So it is certainly a place uh, that is utilized throughout the year on campus. So again, very close and easy to get to for our students. So the first thing I just want to talk about um, is the academic opportunities that you have at Syracuse. First of all, there's a breadth of academic programs to choose from. We have over 200 majors and over 100 different minors. And the university is comprised of our 10 undergraduate schools and colleges. So when you arrive at Syracuse, uh, you're in, I should say you enroll in the college to which you were admitted. Um, those are broken down by different areas of study. And that becomes your home college, which is typically where your major is housed. And it's really one of the first ways to somewhat break down the larger university into a smaller college setting. So giving you the opportunity to really get to know your professors, your peers, but having access to everything that the entire university has to offer a lot of options for interdisciplinary study. Uh, so you'll find that you'll be taking classes in probably at least uh, three to four different colleges while you're at Syracuse. And a lot of our students combine a second major or a minor to complement their major. And those can happen again across uh, any of the disciplines on campus. So we really want students to explore their interests and really customize your academic path as you uh, continue to pursue your major. So you'll find that students that are housed or you know, trying to complete uh, the same major will tweak that a little bit with different classes or again, choosing maybe a second area of study to really tailor to their eventual possible career goals or a specific uh, niche within that particular area of study. And that's something you can certainly do. And I think one of the things that a lot of people think of with Syracuse or a larger institution is that you'll be in large classes all the time and be in large like lecture halls. Not always the case. Um, most of our classes are typically 30 or fewer students. Uh, so you will definitely experience smaller class sizes. And one of the nice things is right from the beginning, your first year, we really take an integrated approach when it comes to academic and career advising. So you'll start meeting with staff or faculty that will help you and guide you along your years at Syracuse, not only to keep you uh, on track to complete your, your degree program on time, but also helping you somewhat build your resume and prepare for life after graduation. So working with these offices uh, that are housed in each college. So each college has a specific career and academic advising. And they will, again, just guide you being able to help you, you know, if you want to fit in, you know, internship experience, uh, maybe research. Uh, when can you study abroad if that's of interest? So helping you kind of navigate and fit in these experiences um, to, again, to help you build your resume and prepare you for life after graduation. So really a lot of customized plans. And we are a research one institution. So we are a top tier undergraduate research university. So that research happens across all levels, not only with our faculty and graduate students, but our undergraduate students as well. And if that's something that you have an interest in, uh, we have had some students get started as early as their first year, uh, but 
that usually will happen maybe after their second year going into their junior or senior year, but that can happen across any of our disciplines. So we do have our students that really want to enhance their learning and continue that outside of the classroom. And they found something interesting that they want to learn and explore more about. Uh, you can see some of the examples uh, here on this particular slide. Uh, I think one interesting example, the two students that you see on the left there, Nikita and Brianna, uh, they were two students from two different colleges. Uh, one is a student in our Falk College studying public health. The other is a student in our Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs studying economics. And they had really a strong passion for wanting to reduce waterborne illness in India. And so they got together and designed a garment, a sari, that has pockets with a water filtration system. And so they are, have been testing their prototypes and pitching their ideas. Uh, we have various uh, like competitions and um, startup boxes throughout the university that you can go if you have an idea, work with an advisor, um, sometimes even professional advisors that are you know, working professionals uh, to help you uh, start maybe a business or get moving on a particular idea that you have for a product. So those are all possibilities that you have at Syracuse. So anything that you might have an interest in, that's something you can explore. And as far as study abroad, about half of our students do spend some time overseas while they're at Syracuse, something we strongly encourage. And we have one of the oldest, um, really most well-recognized study abroad education programs in the country. Uh, we operate five centers around the world, and we also have world partners in about 60 other countries. So plenty of places and opportunities to do that. Uh, most common, I would say, is a semester abroad, but we do have uh, some short-term programs. We have some summer programs, so a lot of ways to fit that in. Uh, we also have some unique programs that are called our discovery programs. Those are for first-year students that are applying to the College of Arts and Sciences, um, our Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs, or a College of Engineering and Computer Science. So in those liberal arts um, or engineering programs, students are eligible to apply for a discovery program in either Strasbourg, Florence, or Madrid. And they are very small programs, but you would actually be starting your first fall semester of your freshman year in one of those centers. So that's another opportunity uh, for students that really have a strong interest in studying abroad and might want to fit in um, multiple experiences. So outside of the classroom, there's so much to do on campus. So similar to the breadth of academic programs that we have to offer, there's a lot that our students can get involved with. Over 300 different clubs and student organizations and usually the first, I should say really the second week of classes, there's always a huge involvement fair, uh, somewhat like a college fair, but it's representatives from all of our different clubs and organizations and you can go and meet with them and just kind of figure out what you might be interested in, what they do and start joining some organizations. But no matter where you end up going to college, really just getting involved in the campus and contributing to your campus environment is one of the best ways to make it feel more like home. And it's also a great opportunity to meet more students uh, in other areas across campus and really learn from them and make new friends and more connections. Uh, throughout the year, always something happening on campus. Uh, we've got concerts, we have student performances, we bring in people like comedians, uh, great uh, speakers throughout the year through our many lecture series. Uh, we had Margaret Atwood recently, uh, Trevor Noah was pictured here. We did a shared university re reading of his book and then he came to campus for our Martin Luther King event and spoke there. So it was great to, you know, after reading his book to um, hear from him. Uh, we have our, a lot of our students get involved in community service. One of the pictures that you see here is from students that are partnering with our local Habitat for Humanity and we have a shackathon. They build small little houses on their main quad and sleep out in them over the weekend uh, to raise awareness for affordable housing. Um, our recreation services does a great job of programming events through our 
our Orange After Dark uh, programs, and those happen both on campus and off campus. Uh, so again, there's always something to do. And off campus, things like uh, skiing, snowboarding, a lot of great places for hiking and outdoor recreation. Um, this time of year, normally we would have a lot of trips to like go apple picking or pumpkin picking, haunted hay rides, uh, whitewater rafting trips. So definitely a ways that we allow our students uh, opportunities to get out and explore the surrounding area as well. One of the other great uh, new facilities that we have on campus that really enhances our student experience is the Barnes Center at the Arch. And over the last year, uh, this just opened last fall, so it's still a pretty new building, but it quickly became one of the most uh, popular buildings or most well-visited buildings on campus, but we really took all of our um, any offices and facilities related to mental and physical health and wellness and combine them all under one roof. So our counseling offices, our student health center, student pharmacy, any type of physical fitness equipment you could possibly think of uh, is there. We have a four story climbing wall. Um, there's a mind spa and it's a probably the most popular spot there is the pet therapy room. So that's uh, very well visited by our students, but all under one location and it's right off of the main quad. So very easy to access. And also uh, that's opening soon, we are in the process of redesigning and renovating our main student center on campus, our Shine Student Center. And that's been an ongoing project over the last year and is scheduled to open this coming spring. So we can't wait to see that. But I really took a lot of feedback from our students, we have meetings with our students, surveys, to really find out what was important to them in a student center. What were the facilities, the resources that they wanted to have there? So not only updated spaces, uh, we'll have a great food court there, but for meeting, hanging out, study areas, we're going to have uh, one wall of all television screens to do like watch parties for some of our sports events. Um, and all of our uh, cultural centers are also going to be located there. So it's going to be a great place uh, right in the central part of campus and can't wait to have that opened. And as far as living on campus, I just wanted to point out, I mentioned before that we are a residential campus. About 70% of our students do live in university housing. It is required your first two years. Um, after that, it is optional. But one of the things that we do offer, mainly for first year students, are our living and learning communities. And these are somewhat like themed housing and they are in sections of our various residence halls on campus, but they all tie in with either a theme that's related to a specific academic area or more like outside interest based. So, uh, but we have about just over 25 of those right now. Again, they are optional for first year students, but if you'd like to live with a group of students that either has that same common interest or studying in a similar area, uh, you have the opportunity to choose that. Uh, the one example that we just put here is our engineering and community, engineering and computer science uh, learning community. And that is housed in Shaw Hall. And so we'll have students in um, both like some of our STEM programs as well as engineering. And not only will they have some classes together during the year, but they'll have study groups. Um, maybe a professor will come in to speak at the residence hall. So there are activities associated with those communities. And if you decide to uh, come to Syracuse or apply to Syracuse someday and you graduate, just know that you'll be part of our Orange Network and our students really take a lot of pride in the school. There's a lot of school spirit. We truly bleed orange and once you're a student, you will always be forever orange. So um, even as a current student at Syracuse, you'll have opportunities to start connecting with some of our alumni. Our alumni are passionate to help our current students. So many of them will come back to campus uh, through the year to either do a lecture or maybe stop in on a class. Um, some will come back and recruit for their own companies, which they're currently working. Uh, but there's ways to be able to connect and network with our alumni as a student and many ways even after you graduate. 
So just to kind of wrap up, um, I talked a lot about the academic experience, the breadth of academic opportunities, not only classes, but also ways to continue your learning outside of the classroom, and then so many things to get involved with on campus. So if any of you are seniors and you're thinking about applying this year to apply to Syracuse, you have two options. We offer an early decision plan as well as regular decision. And this year for students that are applying for the 2021 academic year, we are test optional. So hopefully you're aware of that. But we've always really taken a very holistic process when it comes to reviewing applications. Yes, even though we do require your transcript and in the past we've required test scores, uh, we want to see everything else about you. So all those things that are involved in your application for admission. So what activities have you been involved with? How have you been involved in your local and school community? Uh, what are your teachers and your counselor say about you? So we're looking at your letters of recommendation. Also paying close attention to your essays. So those are all things that we are considering when reviewing your application. Um, of the pool of applicants that we receive every year, we have uh, more students that we could accept that are what we would consider academically qualified and we believe would be academically successful at Syracuse. So we need to look at uh, other areas outside of that. Um, the other thing too, if you are a senior, we do offer personal interviews. Those are evaluative and they are um, included as part of our review process. Um, those are all virtual this year. So if that is something that you have an interest in, you can go onto our website and schedule through our calendar portal uh, to sign up for a virtual interview. We'll be offering those through most of December. So still a little bit of time for that. And also know that Syracuse really makes an effort to uh, allow students to come and make the Syracuse experience affordable. Uh, we do offer both uh, need-based and merit-based uh, awards. And for need-based aid, we do require the CSS profile application in addition to the FAFSA. So you would need both of those for us to fully consider, consider you for need-based aid. And then on the opposite side, all applicants are considered for merit scholarships. You don't need to fill out any separate application. Those are just all based on your information that's in your application for admission. And last year, about 80% of our students did receive some form of financial support, uh, totaling just over $400 million. And over $200 million of that came from SU grants and scholarships. So again, we do try to make it affordable uh, for students to come to Syracuse. So I'm going to wrap up here. I thank you so much for joining me today. I'm probably going to just close out of this session so I can go back in and take a look at the chat box or the Q&A box to see if anyone has any questions. But after today, anything that comes up, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our main admissions phone number and email address are on this last slide pull that right up so you can see that. So feel free to contact us at any time. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Um, are you able to access your Q&A down at the bottom of your screen? It should pop up now. I'm getting in that. Okay, I see it, but don't see any questions coming through right now. Right. Well, with this being recorded and with contact information being at the beginning and at the end, anyone that has any questions that would like to be addressed toward Jennifer specifically or about Syracuse University in general, the recording will be available on oacac.org within a week. I do remind you, go online, see if there's some other universities that you're interested in learning more about. There is a short four question survey following the end of this webinar that we would greatly appreciate you taking. Otherwise, I thank you for your time today. I do hope that you have a great weekend and I hope all is well. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. Have a good weekend. Thank you as well, Victoria.